Come on, let's clap our hands on tonight. And let's thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Son of the living God. Amen. We certainly do thank God for all that he's done and all that he's going to do on tonight. Amen. And so we are definitely in expectation for a move of God like never before. Amen. Amen. And so as we prepare to, and we are coming on a little late tonight, but amen. To God be the glory that we're here. Amen. So we lift you high. It's Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you high. Yahweh.
uh, is that good old hot church. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and get into this uh, this class on tonight. Amen. We ask that those of you watching on live and those of you here in person, that you would share. I feel God in here. That you would share. That you would share uh, on your social media platforms, on both Facebook and YouTube. Amen. Amen. And so if you need that information, if it's hard for you to see on the screen, you can look on our church page and find that information. Amen. Amen. But tonight, 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 we will be continuing uh, Revelation chapter 14. We'll be at Revelation chapter 14, starting at verse 10. Amen. Revelation chapter, and we only got 10 verses tonight. We'll get through them as swiftly as possible. Amen. 10 verses, starting at verse 10, we'll end at verse 20. Amen. 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 Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for uh, your anointing, for your power, for the grace to teach. I ask you, Lord, for the anointing to make teaching easy on tonight, God. I ask you, Lord, to do not let the people see Jonathan, but let them see you. Oh, God, use me for your glory. Oh, God, and God, I'll be ever so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Lord, for strength on tonight. And, God, I praise you, and I thank you, God, that you will use me to say what you would have me to say, to do what you would have me to do. And it is your son, Jesus, let me pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. So let's get into it. Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, starting at verse 10. If you remember from last week what we ended off on, we ended off uh, with talking about uh, the mark of the beast. That's kind of where we ended. We talked about the 144,000 and how they're going to be singing a new song in heaven, you remember. Uh, we talked about that and we talked about the mark of the beast and how... Uh, those that receive the mark of the beast, when that time does come, those that receive it, there will be no forgiveness. There will be no, uh, I can't come back. Once you receive it, that's it. Amen. That's Bible. That's scripture. Amen. So, uh, Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14. And give me just a moment. But well, Revelation chapter 14, and we will begin... At verse 10. Revelation 14, starting at verse 10. All right. Amen. Again, that is Revelation. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, starting at verse 10. And it reads as such. Uh, it says, uh, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture unto the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lord. So last week, that is what we read about. We read about uh, how, again, those that receive the mark of the beast uh, in that time, when that time does come, uh, there will be no forgiveness. In other words, this is why uh, the Bible lets us know uh, if we make our bed in hell, I'm just opening up, that God will be there. Say amen. 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 And we make, oh, come on, y'all talk to me. If we make our bed in hell, God will be there. Amen. And so contrary to what may be popular belief in certain parts of the world, there is a hell. Amen. There is a hell. I don't care what anybody tries to say. I don't care what they're teaching now. Uh, there is a hell. Amen. And truth be told, and let's just let truth be told, if there wasn't a hell, some of us probably wouldn't be served up. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead in a minute. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The truth shall make you, shall set you free. Amen. So, so now, so now, uh, 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 looking at this, uh, it, uh, and we've been doing a lot of comparison lately. We've been talking about how there will be certain things that God will do or has done and how Satan will try to repeat it. Now, I, I just want to kind of 
tag on something real fast and we'll move on, right? But what I what I what I've been uh, attempting with the help of God to show us to allow us to see is that this teaching is not just for what's to come, but this teaching is for right now. Because what we have to understand, Brother Joseph, is that uh, there are certain things that we ought to not be so caught up on. In other words, let me say it like this, and let me just be very clear. The greatest miracle is not somebody getting out of a wheelchair. The greatest miracle is not blind eyes opening, is not the dead getting up. But the greatest miracle is somebody receiving salvation. And somebody uh, crossing over from that world of sin, from that world of death, to the, uh, to the glorious life of salvation. Now, is it easy? No. Uh, when you first get saved, uh, things may start out kind of easy. Things may try to, you know, seem like, oh, this is a walk in the park. But, oh, if you keep on living, you will understand that there comes a time where your faith must be tested. Uh, but what I want us to understand here is that uh, there are certain things that when it, and, and with faith in mind, with faith in mind, I want us to realize that uh, what is upon us right now is the spirit of imitation. Yeah. Come on, go with me, good church. Uh, it is the spirit of imitation. Somebody may ask me, well, why do you say that? Because as I've told us many, many times again, and I keep reminding us that according to Matthew 24, 24, the Bible lets us know that there is coming a time where false prophets and false Christ are going to come. And they are going to do some of the same things that those that are of God will do. Uh, even as you remember in Revelation 13 going into 14, you've, re you've read it. It's in your Bible where it shows us that there will be two witnesses that will come. But then right after that, there will be uh, the Antichrist and someone that will come right after him that will come and do the same thing. The, because the two witnesses will be able to bring fire down from heaven. And apparently the Antichrist and his uh, uh, attack team partner, if you will, they will be able to do the same thing. What, why am I saying that? Why am I bringing it up? Because what we have to understand is that this is why we need discernment. This is why the Bible lets us know to try the spirit and see if it be of God. We have to make sure that what, hallelujah, we have to make sure that what we're entertaining, what we're listening to, who we're allowing to minister to us, you have to be able to discern and tell, is this of God? Is this for me? Should I receive this or not? Amen, amen, amen. Because, again, I say that there are many people who are faking miracles. Come on here. There are people that are coming together with people that are in wheelchairs that are really not bound and they're coming into services and they're uh, 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 stretching their hand out and all of a sudden they get up from the wheelchair and it's not a call. Right. Right. It's a host. It's, it's, been, it's been rehearsed. Amen. Amen. But let me say it like this and let me, and let me be uh, uh, exegetical. Even if it is of God, you have to make sure that that person is actually of God. Because the Bible says that this, many will say that they, Lord, that I not prophesy in your name. That I not cast out devils, that I not give my body to be burned. I did all these things in your name. I prophesied, I spoke your word, and it happened. There was no gifts, there was no, there was no, there was no gimmicks, there was no uh, hook wig, there was no being bamboozled. I said it, it came to pass, I did it in your name, and now the Bible says, men were saying that they Lord, and I prophesied and they give my body to be burnt, and I cast out demons, and I did all these things, but God's going to tell them, apart from me, you work as iniquity, I never knew you. Yes. Right. Oh, come on. Right. So this is why, even in this time frame that, that will come, in that time frame that will come, the thing is, is that this is why Satan, they go back to the text, 
This is why uh, the Bible is showing us these things now. Because uh, it's this time, just like this time that's going to come, just like the time we're living in now, if we're not careful, we'll mess around and say, this is of God, that's is of God, but it's really not. Because, again, I say, there are things that we talked about that, uh, that, 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 that happened or that will happen. And the spirit of the Antichrist was all over, had his mark all over it. And many people, that was what's going to really get a lot of people. Because they're going to be so caught up on, oh, well, the Antichrist is able to do this. And he did that. And the Antichrist, he gave me this. And I, and I was, I, and I couldn't walk. But now uh, he laid hands on me and now I can walk. Let me say that this and be very clear and then move on, all right? I, it, God forbid, if I ever had to be in the wheelchair, I'd rather be in the wheelchair the rest of my life, die and go to heaven, than be able to walk and go to hell. I rather roll my, I rather roll on this earth and go to heaven than roll into hell. Amen. Amen. It's not popular, but the thing is, is that uh, you can't say that you did not hear it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's. Yes. Even Moses said that I rather suffer with the people of God. Moses said I rather suffer with, with the people of God. Then enjoy the pleasure of sin for a little while. That's right. Amen. So just back you up that that's biblical. Yeah. This is thank you say that because this is why the Bible lets us know that there is nothing new under the sun. I want us to keep our hallelujah. I want us to keep our eyes open for the spirit of deception. Yes, that's right. Come on, I'm really trying to give you something. We really have to keep our eyes peeled open for the spirit of deception. Yes. For people that are, are, are acting like they are uh, 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 not a, a threat person or people that are trying to act like they are subtle. In other words, let me use Bible. People that are trying to act like sheep when they're really uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Trying to act like they're so, trying to act like that there's not too much tool, trying to act like they're really not on the Satan side. We got to really watch. The Bible says so watch and pray. That's why a lot of times I don't pray with my eyes closed. Oh, come on. Now I know there's a lot deeper to that text of watch and pray. But I actually physically do it. Sometimes I don't close my eyes when I pray. Because I need to be able to see and sense what's going on around me. Amen. Amen. Even from the days of Moses, like you said, to the time now, you have to be able to tell what is what, the wheat from the tear. Right. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to verse 11. Revelation 14, verse 11, it says, uh, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Message Bible says on the screen, and this is uh, verses 9 through 11, but we'll, you know, we'll catch up. Verse 9 through 11, Message Bible on the screen, it says, A third angel followed, shouting, warning, if anyone worships the beast, and this image and takes the mark on the forehead or hand, that person will drink the wine of God's wrath, prepared unmixed in his chalice of anger and suffer torment from fire and brimstone in the presence of holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. So the angels and God himself will be able to literally uh, 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 smell the scent of, of their torment. Yeah, yeah, uh, smoke from their torment will rise age after age. So in other words, it will never stop. There will, hey, come on, die. There will be no rest. No rest. Somebody say no rest. No respite for those who worship the beast and this image who take the mark of its name. Amen. Uh, let, let, let's move on. 
Uh, verse 12, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, it says, give me one second, y'all, excuse me, just a second. Because y'all got a fan over there, but I'm going to keep this one on me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a working fan. Come on now. There we go. Praise the Lord. Uh, Revelation 14, verse 12, it says, uh, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Verse 12, message Bible, it says, Meanwhile, the saints stand passionately, wait a patient, keeping God's commands, staying faithful to Jesus. So, in the midst of everything that is going to happen, and even in the midst of things that are going on now, this must be our posture to patiently wait on God. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall do what? Strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Bible lets us know uh, 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 that, 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 that we that uh, we must have patience, we must wait on God's, we must also obey his commandments, obey what he's telling us. Can I also, uh, uh, for the sake of, of, of good teaching, can I also tell us that I believe, I believe that in this time, this time that is coming, uh, there will probably not be much conviction during this time, what am I saying? In other words, uh, 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 it will be quite difficult, or let me say that there won't be much conviction from man during this time. In other words, you know how when you come in, uh, around one of the saints and how it's like if you were living a life of sin or if you did something you ain't had no business doing and you come around one of those saints that you know they prayed up and you know that they're on fire for God and all of a sudden you come around them and it's like, ooh, you were not the person I needed to be around right now. Why? Because you knew you weren't right. But now here it is. Uh, with this time that's going to come, it won't be. It won't be a popular thing to be saved. It won't be a popular thing to be around church uh, 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 people, people that are saved. So, in other words, here it is. It says, "Meanwhile, the saints stand patiently, uh, stand passionately, patient, keeping God's commands." So, in other words, uh, even if because there probably won't be a whole lot of uh, streaming preaching. There probably won't be a lot of, oh, well, you can go to this service down the road if you want to go to church. No, no. So in other words, here it is. For anybody that's living during that time or even now, and you're wondering, okay, I don't have the Holy Spirit yet. I don't know how to identify his voice. The best thing you can do is follow his commandments. The best thing you can do is keep his commands in your heart. Uh, David said it like this. He said, thy word. Have I hid in my heart that I may not do what? Sin against thee. Psalms 119 verse 9, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God. Jesus. Somebody say that's Bible. That's Bible. Amen. Because there's some times where, uh, and, and I can only talk from experience, but there's some times where I feel like I've missed it. There's sometimes I feel like I cannot identify the voice of God. But that is where uh, we have to go and we have to get back in our word. Why do you say that? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by what? The word of God. So the thing is, in order for me to have the faith to believe that I can hear God, the only, the only way I can be able to have that faith to be to the point where I can be able to, to identify his voice is that I have to be familiar with what he has already said. There's a bishop that I know, um, and, I, and I don't mind mentioning his name, Bishop Kyrus. There was something that I heard him say a while back, and it stuck with me, right? What he said was, how can you know what God is saying if you don't know what he's already said? How can you know 
what God is currently saying. I feel teach on it real good. How can you know what God is saying if you don't know what he's already said? In other words, if God were to start talking to you, right? And the thing is, is that the Bible, thank you, God. The Bible says, see, I feel teach on it real good. The Bible says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. The Bible even goes on to let us know that his thoughts are as far as, and I can't remember exactly how he said it, but you understand, right? Here it is. Uh, in order for me to be able to identify the voice of somebody whose ways are not my ways, his thoughts are not my thoughts, the only way I can be able to identify his voice is I have to become familiar with God language. I wish y'all would talk. Uh, I have to get familiar with how a how God talks. Uh, it is oh God. It is only God who uh, 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 who it makes sense to say. Uh, I want you to go up to this mountain and prepare to sacrifice your son. But then, right before I get ready to take his life, you tell me don't do it. Only that makes sense to God. Uh, and, and that's the test, and that was the testing of Abraham's faith. It is only God who it makes sense to say that the only way I can save your life, uh, the only way I could have done that was for me to die. Yeah. That is God's way. It is God who it, 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 that that that's God's way of of doing things for Him to spit on the ground. To get uh, uh, the dirt from the ground, make it into a clay, and put it on somebody's eyes to heal their sight. Tell somebody that is God language. That's also God mind. My prayer is that in these last and even days that God will allow us to see things from his perspective. Allow us to be able to see things uh, in a way to where we won't be so confused and so caught up on how the world does things. I'm really not trying to detour too much, but I have to say this and I'm going to let it go, right? The problem that we have a lot of times is that we can be so caught up on how the world says you have to get married. We can be, oh come on, we'll be so caught up on how the world says this is how you get, uh, uh, this is how you become wealthy. There, these are the ten steps of how to do this, seven steps how to do this, five steps of how to do this, six steps of how to do this, and, and all of these wonderful things, right? But the thing is we have to understand that the Bible lets us know to be not conformed to this this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Your mind has to be conformed and it has to be renewed. The Bible is though by the renewing of your mind, the continuous renewing, the constant renewing. In other words, you can allow, we cannot allow our mind to be conformed to the systems of the world. Because the world will tell us, oh, well, why you got to pray all the time? Because my Bible tells me that if I pray, I won't faint. So the world may say, oh, well, uh, why you got to pray all the time? Don't God know your heart? Uh, listen, baby, that, that I, I understand where you're coming from. I understand your logic, but I have to do this thing by the book. But the thing is that here it is, and this is the point I was making. But if you tell me that God has told you to do something, this is the point I really want you to catch. Put it on your Facebook wall. How is it that you're going to tell somebody God said this and God told you to do that when you don't even know God's language? This is why, oh God, no, 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 Jonathan, bring it in. This is the problem of why so many people have said God said this, God told me to do that, God told me to tell you this, and it's not of God because we are listening to people who only, uh, who, who, who heard a voice but never, but did not hear the voice. You're used to hearing voices. And you probably need a doctor. No, no, let me not go that way. Yeah. Uh, you're used to hearing voices. Yeah. I didn't mean to go this way. I really didn't. You're used to hearing voices, but can you identify the voice of God? 
Because the Bible says like this, and I have to let it go. The Bible says that my sheep know my My sheep, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep, and the Bible calls Jesus what? The Lamb. So what that tells me is that if he that if he called me a sheep and he is a lamb, that tells me that we eventually, over the course of time, have to become one. Abide in me. Oh, I'm just giving you Bible. And I in you. That sounds like a connection. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll leave this alone. Staying faithful to Jesus. God make me more like you. My no shall I. Be. Glory to God. Abide in me and I in you. See, we don't quote scriptures like that no more. Because those, those kind of scriptures, those are sacrifice scriptures. Those are dying scriptures. Die to your ways, to your thoughts. So let me ask you this, and I'm gonna really let it go. When God looks at you, what does what does what what when he looks at you, what does it remind him of? A sheep or a goat? Oh, you do know why I said that, right? Because just like I mentioned uh, two weeks ago, or was it last week, where I talked about this uh, acronym, the GOAT, greatest of all time? Why? No, no, I'm not going to go there. Why do we strive to be number one? Why can't we just be submitted to God, who is the one? What does, you can put that on your Facebook wall, what does, what do we remind God of? A lamb or a goat? Which one? It's a rhetorical question. You ain't got to answer out. But when God, I want you to really make a self evaluation here. Well, I want you to make a self evaluation tonight. When God looks, matter of fact, I want you to go and ask God yourself and let Him ask. When He looks at you, when He looks at me, what does He see? Does He see a goat or a lamb or a sheep? What does He see? All right, I'll leave it alone. Question. Okay. Right. Yes. You say, oh, question. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation 14, 13. Amen. And some of y'all, I, I, I hope somebody put it on their Facebook wall tonight. What does God see? A goat or a sheep? That's right. Amen. Uh, Revelation 14, 13. It says... Uh, 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 where my verse 13 it says and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth yea save the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them verse 13 in the message Bible on the screen it says I heard a voice out of heaven Write this, blessed are those who die in the master from now on. How blessed to die that way. Yes, says the spirit, and blessed rest from their hard, hard work. None of what they've done is wasted. God blesses them for it all in the end. Can I tell us that this is why uh, the old school church would say like this, payday is coming I can preach at any moment. Payday is coming after a while. Yeah. This is why we have to understand that uh, 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 it may, hallelujah, that it may not feel like it's paying off now. It may not feel like uh, being saved and living for God and living a sanctified, uh, uh, consecrated life. It may not feel like it's paying off. Uh, there may be some days that are better than others. Come on. There may be some days that it feel like, you know what, I don't want to be saved. I just want to kind of do my own thing. No, I don't want to get up and pray. No, I don't want to get on my knees and pray. No, I don't want to get in my word. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be holy. I don't want to do the right thing right now uh, because the right thing is not convenient. No, I don't. No, no, no. I don't want to be the bigger person. No, I really want to tell this person off. I really want to cuss this person 
the house. But can I tell you that this is why we got to remember that the thing is, is that in the end, you win. Maybe this is the wrong message tonight. In the end, you win. In the end, it'll pay off. But you got to know that there are that, that many, 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 many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. Tell somebody your deliverance is on the way. Just tell them, just tell them, prophesy that to them. Your deliverance is on the way. Verse 14 through 16. We're almost done. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. It says, And I looked and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Verse 15, it says, and another angel, I'm in the King James Version, uh, Revelation 14, 15, it says, and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Verse 16, it says, And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his hand, uh, excuse me, he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was ripe. Message Bible on the screen, verse uh, Revelation 14 through 16, it says, I looked up, I caught my breath. This is John talking. He said, I looked up, I caught my breath. A white cloud and one like the Son of Man sitting on it. He wore a gold crown and held a sharp sickle. Stay with us. It's going to make sense in just a few moments. Another angel came out of the temple shouting to the cloud enthroned, Swing your, si your sickle. This is what the angel is saying to Jesus sitting on the cloud. He says, Swing your sickle and reap. It's harvest time. Earth's harvest is ripe for reaping. The cloud enthroned gave a mighty sweep of his sickle, began harvesting earth in a stroke. When you see this image, you're going to see uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, like, 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 like maybe certain movies, like, uh, maybe the underworld, or if you're familiar with, like, uh, certain, uh, characters in movies like The Reaper, you the next image you're gonna see is gonna really, it might take you for a loop, but here it is. And those of you on social media, I'll put the link in the description for the picture and you can see it, uh, afterwards. But those of you here in person, if you need to move closer, move closer. I want you to see this. Now, this is an image put together of God, of what God, of what God is imagined to look like. But if you look in His hand, you, that is a sickle. Now, if you see that, what it automatically brings your mind to, and social media, I'm sorry you can't see it, uh, but we will have it very soon to where you'll be able to see these at the same time that we're seeing it. But uh, as you're looking on the screen here, you'll see that there's a, a, a something like a knife in the Lord's hand, and it's curved. Now, if you see that, then it probably reminds you of something like the Reaper. Because uh, uh, the Reaper in many movies, they have that long staff. Wait a minute, catch it now. The one in the Lord's hand is short, but the one that you see in the cartoon of the Reaper is long. So could we suggest that it is not just comparison, but it's somebody just trying to do as, uh, as we say today, you're trying to do too much? Why your single gotta be so long? 
All right, y'all, y'all know where we going, bitch. All right. Uh, uh, anyways, why, why does your circle have to be so long? In other words, again, this is why I've been telling us that the things that the Antichrist is going to do, he's going to mock God, but he's going to try to do it on a larger scale. Satan has to do the most, he has to have the most likes, the most care, and the most action to try to put all the attention, all the glory on himself. For deeper study, this is why when you look at Satan's name, uh, Satan's original name was Halil. That word Halil means celebrity. That word Halil means celebrity. And this is why when you look at the spelling or even the pronunciation of the word Halil in Hallelujah, Halle, Halil, they almost sound the same. Yes. Amen. So whenever we say Hallelujah, it almost sounds like we're calling Satan's original name. But when we say Yah, that's God's name. So what we're saying is Hallelujah. Praise to God. Hallelujah. Most high praise to God. Yes. So every time you say hallelujah, you remind Satan. This is why I told us what I said earlier. You remind Satan of a position that he lost and that he can never get again. Glory to God. Yes. This is why, or, or for a brief note, this is why I cannot understand why some people can come to church, come in the house of God and not praise God. Because when you when you really come to the conclusion that I can do something that Satan can never do again, you will you you can when you come into the understanding that you can literally take the position that Satan lost and can never get again, you're able to do something that Satan was fired from doing. I don't want, let me say this and I really leave it all. I don't understand how people that are saved say that they don't like Satan but yet don't praise God. This is why those mothers back in the day, see, I'm old school to the bone. This is why those mothers back in the day, whenever somebody would come into the house of God and you weren't praising, they would look at you and be like, uh uh, you're demonic. No, no, there's something wrong with you. Come on to the altar. Hey, my shoulder goes here. Come on to the altar. Let's pray. Amen. That's right. Oh, you can't clap your hands here. You got a demon. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. Y'all, excuse me. I feel God tonight. You can't praise. Uh, come on up here. You can't sing. Come on up here. You can't sing. You can't clap your hands. You can't at least wave your hand. Uh, uh You got a demon. Come on up here. Amen. Let's cast it out. So again, I go back to the sickle. That sickle was, in other words, used is used to uh, 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 go ahead and to do some separating. Let's go ahead and 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 and, and rec- let me go ahead and receive them to myself, my people. Let me go ahead and stop this suffering. Let's go ahead and stop this. The harvest is ripe. It, 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 we are we are now ready to go ahead and bring a close to what's going on. Uh, verse nineteen. Let's go to verse nineteen. No, 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 no. Let me read verse eighteen and then I'll move on to nineteen. Verse 18, it says, And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire uh, and cried with a loud voice. Matter of fact, actually, I'm sorry. Let's go to verse 17. Verse 17, it says, And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. So Jesus has one and this other angel. And now in verse 18 it says, And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Uh, verse 19, verse 19, 
It says, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Uh, verse 20, and it says, and the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Message Bible on the screen, verses 19 through 20. It says, The angel swung his simple harvest earth's vintage and heaved into the winepress, the giant winepress of God's wrath. The winepress was outside the city as the vintage was trotting. Blood poured from the winepress as high as a horse's bridle, a river of blood for 200 miles. In other words, this is now the time where, when that sickle has now been uh, swung, uh, in other words, there's no holding back. Amen. Because, and, and I've never seen a wine press a day in my life uh, that I can recall, but I, I can imagine that when, uh, when, when, when those grapes and when all that, when, when those grapes are, are about to burst, and they're put into that wine press, and now all that wine come out, and yeah, it can be kind of a messy situation. But this is talking about actual people. Oh, I hope you caught that. In other words, I'm tired of playing. I'm ready to show people. Matter of fact, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I haven't said it in a while, but let me say it now uh, to close this thing, right? See, remember the time now where everybody's talking about, oh, the grace and mercy of God, and God is a God of mercy and grace, and oh, God will forgive you, God did all this and third. But then I've told us, right, I've been telling us that God is the same yesterday, today, oh, come on, and forevermore. So uh, the same God that will burn up an entire city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and he tell them, leave the city, do not turn around, do not go back, and all of a sudden, Lot, he obeyed his wife, didn't she turn to a pillar of salt? Amen. The same God that told the children of Israel, follow my commandments, do what my leaders tell you to do, and didn't do it, and they stayed in that place of, uh, of being cycled generation after generation, staying in the same cycle, right? right? This is why in the Old Testament many people called God and the, 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 the terrible God. In other words, a God of wrath. This 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 God is 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 frightening. Right? He's a God of wrath. But what did we just read on the screen? It says, uh, uh, it, and uh, the angel swung his sickle, harvest earth's vintage, and heaved it, it into the winepress, and the giant winepress of God's wrath. The city winepress was outside the city as the vengeance was trying blood poured, blood poured, blood poured, blood poured, blood don't come out of grapes, blood poured. From the wine press as high as a horse's bridle. Do you know how high a horse's bridle is? I've ridden a horse before, right? I'm coming to a close. I've ridden a horse before. A horse on all fours, they stand about maybe to where my uh, where my ear is, to the top of my ear. A big horse, they 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 can uh, they 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 stand quite high. And sometimes a really big horse, you got to reach kind of high to touch his back, right? The bridle of the horse is what you have to get on to, right? So, and you work with horses before, am I right? The bridle is what, okay, thank you. The bridle is what they put on the back of the horse for them to ride. You, Negro, you better teach. They get on that horse and they ride it and it's quite high. Some people have to, because the horse sits so tall, they have to get a little step stool to get up on the horse to actually sit down on it. But the Bible is letting us know that the blood will not just be that high, but it will be long because the Bible shows us that it's going to be about 200 miles of blood. 
But we got to be passionate about him, passionate about his commands, passionate about what makes God happy and not going after the lust of the flesh. The Bible says for us to walk out of the spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I told us time and time again that the spirit of the Antichrist is all about convenience and competition. What's easy? What's easy to do? What is a convenience? How can I get away? How can I make this thing easier? Amen. But the given information is on the screen. Amen. I, I, I sometimes I just gotta cut myself off and come to a close. But we are done. Next week we'll be in uh, the Lord will, Lord's will, will be at Revelation chapter fifteen. We'll be at Revelation chapter fifteen. And we're almost done. There are 22 books in the book of Revelation. So it's about time that we, uh, so I, and I don't know what our next series will be yet. I really don't. Amen. But we'll see God and when that time comes, we'll, we'll, we'll let everybody know. Amen. But given information is on the screen, those that desire to sow, you can sow. Amen. And then on the on the uh, live Facebook and YouTube, I will put the uh, given information in the description on tonight. Amen. And so, uh, if you if you on tonight, if you desire prayer, we will we want to pray with you. And those of you who have a prayer request. Uh, you can put your prayer request. You can, if those of you on Facebook, you can DM our page personally to where all of we can see what you have to say. You can DM us and you can send us a, 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 a direct message on Messenger. And those of you on YouTube or those that would like to uh, call in, you can call the number at 803-443-9266. Again, that is 803-443-9266. 803-443-9266. Amen. But we want to let you all know that we love you all with the love of Christ. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you joining us once again. And we pray that you have received uh, on tonight something from the Lord that you have received something during this midweek push that will push you throughout the rest of the week. Amen. And then the next time that we will be live will be on Sunday morning. Next time we'll be live will be Sunday morning. Uh, 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 we want you to stay in remembrance that we do have noonday prayer uh, Monday through Saturday from 12 to 1 unless Announced differently uh, on this Saturday. This Saturday at what time? At 9 a.m.? This Saturday at, I want to say it's 9. Yeah. Uh, this Saturday at 12, excuse me. This Saturday at 12, we will have, I, I think it's our day of love or. Who? Oh, this Saturday, that's okay. This, this Saturday, this Saturday at 12. We will uh, have our first men's community prayer. Amen. This Saturday, and we'll make sure we'll post it on the uh, church page that this Saturday at 12, we'll have our first community uh, men's day of prayer. Well, uh, where men that are of the fold here and those that, uh, if you are a man that uh, you don't have a church home or you have a church home and you're not doing anything Saturday, come on out. And we'll get together and we'll pray and we'll fellowship and we'll have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Uh, and again, the next time we'll be live on here, we'll be live again Sunday morning uh, for our worship service. Amen. So, uh, nevertheless, if there's no more uh, comments, questions, concerns, anything like that, we'll prepare to stand and be this fish. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this night of us coming together to pray, to uh, dive into the Word of God. And God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you, Lord, for leading us and guiding us. God, we thank you, Lord, that you never give up on us, but that you'll continue 
to uh, do work on the inside. Make us who you call us to be. And God, as we leave this place and every presence, God, we thank you, Lord, for a constant relationship with you. Uh, that our relationship with you will be stronger each and every day. That we will hold fast to the faith. In the name of Jesus, that you will cover us uh, in your blood. Watch over our homes, our vehicles, our loved ones, family, friends, and even our enemies. Uh, God, watch over us, protect us. And God, we just praise you. We give your name all the glory, honor, and praises to your name. And even the things we don't want to pray for, we thank you that your son Jesus is on the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. And so, God, we thank you, we praise you, and we'll be careful to give your name all the glory, honor, and praise that's to your name. And it is your son Jesus that we pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all, and we'll see you again Sunday morning. Amen. God bless.